All right, this video is going to be all about drawing sphere form variations. And the thing you should know about a sphere is that literally if you draw a circle, you're drawing a sphere. The one thing to avoid on the variations is going straight across when you divide light and dark. And to get a sphere to look like a sphere, you have to wrap a line around it. And usually that's when you, um, when you light things. Um, so here, you're drawing a sphere, and then you're gonna draw an ellipse around it, right? And as soon as you draw that ellipse around the sphere, like you add a hemisphere, you're now building this from a flat circular shape into a form. And that's really all that it takes. Now, you know, I've associated these with objects that you might draw. So it's like you could build a head around a sphere. And so if you want the head to kind of look down, like you're looking down at a head, uh, you put the hemisphere like you're above uh, in the northern hemisphere, looking down. And here, now the head's looking up relative to us because we've taken our arc and we've gone upward with the arc instead of downward with the arc. We can also give this a little bit of line weight variety, which I think is really important. Um, you'll notice the other thing that I'm doing too is I'm using two different colors of pencils. I'm using one that's a, a, a lighter yellow and another that's sort of a, a violet color. Um, you'll notice too that I usually complete full ellipses and then leave those out as an underdrawing. Um, I do that because it's easier to do a full ellipse than it is a partial ellipse much of the time. And I think line weight variety is really important. This, this exercise right here is really important for drawing eyeballs, um, especially when you want them to look different directions because you draw the sphere and then you draw ellipses onto it. So if you put a circle in the center, then you can go around drawing ellipses that look like they're getting closer and closer to the edge. And I think if you're able to do this, you're going to be able to draw an eye in any position. It's going to open up a lot of options for you as to what you can draw. So the ellipse has to narrow and almost flatten out as you get to the end, or out to the edge, rather. And you can totally fill this up with this exercise. You know, any spot that still has the blank paper on it is a spot that you can continually develop and continue to draw on top of. Let's see. Next, this one's going to be taking like a small chunk out of the uh, out of the sphere. So it's like if you took a, a a cherry tomato or a grape and you sliced off just the teeniest little bit, you'd be left with something like this. Um, and this one's useful because you're going to wind up drawing a lot of um, objects where you have a ball that sort of caps off a cylinder or something like that. And this is the sort of shape that you're going to go in with to finish that out. Um, generally speaking, you will wind up putting um, the heavier line weight on the parts of the sphere that you want to come forward or to imply a uh, shadow with the sphere. Um, so here, this one's tricky because, you know, we don't have the benefit of seeing the ellipse. We're doing that small slice, but instead of showing the the slice and or the top of the slice, we're, we're showing just the spherical part. So it can be a little bit tricky. So I call this one the contact lens because this is a very shallow slice. Um, and you'll use this sort of variation when you're going to draw bowls and things like that. But to me, it looks like a contact lens where you take about, you know, 20% of the sphere and cut off the rest. What I like about using complementary color, color pencils, a light and a dark version, is that you get um, one version to sort of establish the guidelines and the other one you can be 
more careful with or um, while still maintaining a bit of looseness and the light color just sort of disappears and you can pick the best of your sphere variations I like drawing eggs as an exercise because they're pretty unforgiving um, I would suggest doing a lot of these it's kind of like an intermediate version of the sphere form variation the bowl I would say is probably anywhere from about one-third to 50% uh, of a sphere and you're going to be drawing a lot of bowl-like objects if you go into any kind of uh, art career where you do illustration or something like that. So um, you want this one to kind of be pretty well mastered. All right, I call this one the, the snow globe. It's pretty much just like the small slice one that we've done before. We're just putting the slice in the bottom and it's allowing us to kind of practice that idea that we're going to cap off this uh, other objects with this kind of sphere uh, form later. So, um, you know, it's great to watch all these videos, but remember that you have to try these out to, to make them make sense for yourself. I hope you enjoyed it. There's plenty more on the YouTube channel with the seven basic forms and their variations. And in other videos, I've gone over many more options for you to practice.